What's happening, Fran? This is lockdown project number one. I don't know how many there's going to be, but this is number one. One. <laughs> so, we've had a clear out and um, got old t-shirts and shirts of Rich's and mine that were not even good enough at a charity shop. So I'm making a rag rug and I've had a go once before and it wasn't that successful. But um, decided I might as well have a try at it. So at the moment I'm ripping them into one inch strips, more or less pulling all the fluffy bits off the edge um, and the t-shirts you actually have to cut they don't rip very well um, and then joining them together and I'll show you how I do that this is a long string fold them over make a little slit in the end so this is the piece I'm joining on just lay it on top bring the loose end through the hole and pull and it forms a really good join, not free join. So you can see <laughs> we've got loads of it, all different colours. Um, these have just got to be added on and uh, I'm going to have a go at making a rag rug on my peg loom. I'll show you that in a moment. So here is our ball of cut up torn up rags don't try and be precise about your widths unless you're that way inclined it really doesn't matter because as you can see once it's woven on here it all begins to blend in so the way this peg loom works is it's literally just pegs with a string attached into holes you can make these yourself we bought this peg loom a few years ago but there's lots of instructions on YouTube about how to make one or where to buy them so once I've got my string of rags I'm literally just weaving in and out making sure you go opposite way round so if you've got an odd number of pegs it'll always just work backwards and forwards and our colours are completely random I sort of chose blues and reds because that's what we had really um, this is so relaxing and so easy and so quick and you build these this weaving up on these pegs until you've got quite a lot of it up to about here and then you simply pull the pegs out pop them back in and the weaving just moves down the strings which go all the way through and are loose at the other end so when I finished we'll literally just tighten it all up tie these strings off into a fringe tie this end off into a fringe and uh, hopefully we've got a cozy rug to go just down here where we sit and our feet get a little bit cold and it's actually really soft and really quite thick and nice and all cotton so it can be hand washed so i'm dead chuffed for the sake of uh, something that's cost us nothing and a few days of sitting doing something relaxing we've got a little rug so you've been busy haven't you <laughs> yeah and also look out the window that contraption <laughs> there is Fran's little bird feeder looks a bit uh what's the word did you say wicker wicker, <laughs> wicker man <laughs> So we haven't yeah. had any birds visit yet so uh, we might have to put it further down towards the uh, hedgerow but we'll see so as you can see we're trying to kill time but it just won't die well it's uh, exactly four weeks now since we've been in lockdown and we're a bit uh, jaded stir crazy <laughs> <laughs> it's been harder in some ways this lockdown I think um, because last time we were heading into spring and you had spring to look forward to yeah. and you had the, the lights were getting the lights were getting lighter the lights were getting lighter <laughs> easy for you to say <laughs> um, that's how crazy we're going now but all that's happened this time is it's getting darker and colder uh, yeah. and we've felt a bit closed in yeah haven't we and as much as we know we're lucky to be on the boat a 50 foot narrow boat when you you can only go out for essentials and 
and the towpath is too muddy to be sitting out or doing anything outside you're on here all the time it's um been a bit cozy well, we've started doing something we've never done before and that's arguing no we <laughs> haven't no, we <laughs> strangling each other <laughs> Uh, is is separating from each other for just for an hour every morning. Like Fran gets up and we have breakfast, and then Fran goes and walks the dogs for an hour. And I generally tidy up, do the washing up, put it all away, sweep the floors, clean the floors, or whatever. Result. Yeah, and then you know that's that's great and gives gives us both time to just uh, reflect and think about the day ahead. You blast your music away when I'm gone. I think just don't turn you turn my music on, yeah, and uh, sing along or whatever. And I think, you know, things like that just keep you sane. And you'll see from some of the clips that we'll show you, you know, some of it has been me off on my own. And that's the only reason why is that, that I need that morning walk. You don't so much, but I need mm. to get out of the boat and get out for an hour. And you're happy just to sing. <laughs> well, we've met some nice people on the towpath, haven't we? Uh, yeah. is it Richard and Linda, is it? I think it's Linda. Oh, sorry if it's not Linda. <laughs> and... Uh, where did you go this morning? Well, Richard and Linda told us that there was um, a farm nearby here that's not marked on the maps. We didn't know it was there. And just up from Bridge 65 um, on the Shropshire Union Canal, there's just, it's called Victoria Farm. It's just a farm, but they've got um, a hut or a shop front outside with an honesty box. They've got hundreds of chickens just wandering around free, proper real free-range chickens that you know are just outdoors all day they're in an orchard so they're eating the apples that have fallen fantastic and they're selling fresh vegetables homemade kindling that they've chopped themselves plants fabulous and so cheap so the last few days i've just been going up there coming back with big bags of fantastic yeah. cheap vegetables <laughs> and eggs and it's like We've heaven enough potato to last us till christmas now, so. <laughs> So exciting. No, really, we've got enough potatoes to last us till Christmas. <laughs> what, even roasties? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we did a lovely walk uh, not long ago, didn't we? It was we did, yeah. Quite a distant, quite a long distance walk, about 13 miles all told, uh, to see the Devil's Ring and Finger, which is a Neolithic... Um, what would you call it? Well, they're standing, standing stones, stones, a pair of yeah. standing stones. We'll tell you more on the video when you see it about them, but it was a lovely walk, wasn't it? Well, that's the longest walk we've done so far, hasn't it? Hasn't it? Yeah. And that's been a few weeks ago now, hasn't it? Yeah. So. But we've uh, been keeping active, doing odds and sods, read so many books, haven't we, together yes. over the last four weeks. It's yeah. been great from that point of view. Yeah. And nothing much else has happened. We've only put... Well, this is the first video we've put up, hasn't it, since lockdown? I think you did, yeah, you, you put one up in the middle of lockdown, middle, but yeah, yeah, from beforehand. Simply because, you know, there's only so many towpath walks we can show you, and I think everybody's going to get bored with it, so, yeah. you know. Only but, so many cups of tea you can see us drinking. Yes, cheers. cheers. <laughs> anyway, lockdown is officially ended now. Um, it's not going to be that different because we're still very very restricted and Christmas plans have been messed up a little bit we can't see the family that we wanted to see no um, but nor can anybody no so, nor yeah. can anybody but we moved from our remote location just the other side of town uh, day before yesterday we stocked up with coal well we tried to stock up with coal but they only had one bag didn't they we yeah, filled we the tank up with diesel and uh, we've moored the other side of the town, well, just on the edge of town now, there's houses either side of us. And um, yesterday the fuel boat came along. Yeah, which that's was great. lucky. Because we've got everything that we need now for probably five weeks, um, which will get us beyond Christmas into the new year, apart from water. That's all. So we've got six bags of coal and two gas tanks full, virtually. And uh, so we're okay, we're all yeah. set. It's a nice feeling, isn't it? Yeah. So. Yesterday we were hoping to move somewhat, but it absolutely peed down all day, so we just stayed on board, didn't we? And yeah. uh, read books. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, but um, today I'm editing this video you're watching now, and uh, tomorrow, all being well, fingers crossed, we'll be on the move again. You have been working, haven't you? I have. Uh, well, we both have. I've not been slacking. Um, I've put all the podcasts that uh, we've recorded over the last few months 
on a new YouTube channel called Floating Hour Podcast. Lots of people were unsure what a podcast is, never listened to one in their lives before, and it, it can be a bit difficult to go and find them where they are. So I've put them on a new YouTube channel called Floating Hour Podcast. They're all going to be there. I'm going to put every one on that we do. We do about two a month, don't we? Something yeah, like that. alternate, tend to alternate between... Um, vlogs, yeah. then a podcast. Don't ask me what's happened to episode four. Something's <laughs> gone wrong at the providers where we, la where we uh, launch our podcasts, if you like. And uh, number four's gone missing. So uh, You spent all day trying to find oh, it yesterday. My head in, <laughs> so my head in, in the end, we've decided those who've listened to number four, that's a treasure. If you've got it recorded anywhere, it's a treasure because it's not out there anymore. <laughs> Fran's been busy weaving. You've yep. finished the rug. Yep. And uh, you've been weaving scarves and cowls like a demented angel. And also been crocheting <laughs> Christmas decorations. That's how bad it's been. <laughs> <laughs> because we're going to launch our new website. We haven't had a website before, so it's brand new for us. It's called floatingourboat.com. And uh, it's not up at the moment, but hopefully in the next, within the next week, I think it's going to be launched. Then all our products, Franz scars, Franz weavings. Not the mice. Not the mice, though. No. <laughs> and some of my paintings and anything else that we uh, come up, we discover we can make or sell, yeah. that we're going to put on there. All um, under one roof, yeah. so we haven't got. I won't worry about Etsy, I don't think, any longer. Once that's running, everything will be on the website. And also I've started writing a, um, a blog. Um, so I've done a few episodes of there, a few blogs. Yeah, well, you always have just... written a journal on board, haven't yeah. you? So you thought you'd yeah. extend that into a blog and all the blogs are going to now be on the website as well. So you can read Fran's daily comments. Well, not daily. Pre no, it'll be just as and when. Again, you know, if I've gone out and something has happened that I feel that I need to write about... I'll just put it down, but, um, you know, it's no big deal. It's just just my thoughts. It's very nice, actually. I quite enjoy reading them. <laughs> so that's us. Basically, we're still here and uh, looking forward to normality coming back. I hope you've all kept well over the last few months. And uh, here's looking forward to um, some cruising towards the new year. Yes. And before, yeah, before and in the new year. So, yes. Uh, cheers. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> Nice long one, this friend. <laughs> and uh, we've come to see the devil's finger and ring. Devil's ring and finger. <laughs> Get it right. We've read up about it um, in the local history sites. Let's just and, turn this around. And I really wanted to come and see it. And this is the two stones. The circular one is really rare, and there's only a handful of circular stones in England. Um, and obviously this is the devil's ring, this is the devil's finger and nobody's quite sure what's happened. They're not in their original site, they've been moved and it looks like they've just been dumped against this old stone wall within the last few hundred years. But they're probably Neolithic, maybe even Bronze Age. Um, Neolithic makes them at minimum about 5,000 years old, possibly older. Wow. Um, and they're not quite sure what they were, whether this was an entrance to a burial site or a tomb with the hole in it. Um, I did read somewhere that there was a possibility this was an altarpiece. Um, but they would have both been standing, um, probably as part of a, a standing circle. There is nothing near here. Apparently there's something Bronze Age near here. There's no Neolithic burial sites near here. So it's a little bit of a mystery. But 
They're so old. And these grooves were possibly made by sharpening tools um, repeatedly, whether that was sacrificial or just hunting tools, I don't know. I don't know, and nobody knows. But it's just wonderful to be near something so old. And they're just tucked away. There's no sign to them. You've got to hunt them out. You've got to find them. Um, yeah, it's feels very special even though they're not in their original place it still feels very very special to touch something precious you're going to do one of your druid dances around it now <laughs> got fed up with jacket potatoes <laughs> um, so we're this is our favorite recipe at the moment and it's just a very very simple lentil soup um, so I'm going to fry some carrot some chopped onion some celery including the leaves because they're really tasty in some olive oil just sweat them off for five minutes and this is our, um, also my favourite new little pan, which I didn't really choose because it's red and it's going to match the new stove on the new boat, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a um, fabulous little cast iron pan. So I'm just going to uh, fry those off for a few minutes until they're sweated down. And then I'm going to add some red lentils. I don't know, half a cup, maybe. Um, some black pepper some mustard seeds which I really love in it and just some vegetable stock to cover and bring it to the boil and we stick it on the fire and leave it for I don't know hour hour and a half and then it's the most delicious lentil soup ready for lunch and to be honest I'm using these vegetables because this is what I've got if you've got swede or turnip or leek or anything you can put in there and we don't even blend it down and it is delicious and so good for you I worked it out yesterday, I think it costs about 30 pence for our lunch to have this, so the recipe of the day. Oh, we're not even measuring it out. I How never measure it, you know me with cooking, I never measure anything. How carefree. If it's the thing is, if it starts to cook down and it's too thick, add more water. If after a half an hour or so it looks a bit runny, add more lentils. These little red lentils cook in about 20 minutes, so it's such a quick thing to cook. This stock is a vegetable bouillon, bouillon, um, which we use if you want to use well, whatever stock you use. We use this because it's organic and Shows the carton. pretty good stuff. Where do you get that from? Um, you can get it in supermarkets, I yeah. think. I think this came from one of the um, plastic free shops that we use. So I don't like things salty, or we don't. So we actually make this up quite quite weak. But you could just put a stock cube in there if you wanted to do, or if you had your own stock. That's probably the best thing to do, and I have done it in the past. Mustard seeds, I absolutely love them. They're just they're not essential for this, but they just give it a lovely flavour. And some black pepper. That's fine, I shall bring it to the boil and then just leave it on the fire and um, keep my eye on the thickness of it. And uh, I'm popping up the shops. Rich is doing editing. When I come back, lunch will be ready. Even I could do that. You could, well. <laughs> Well, this has been our mooring spot here for uh, four weeks yesterday and we've only moved twice. Once to go and get um, coal and fuel and once behind us to go and get water and uh, we came back to the same spot. We've been really frugal with the water and we've managed to make it last. But we are really tired of being in the same spot now. 
Um, lockdown is ending in a couple of days and I think today is so exciting because I think we're going to move again just down into town get water and supplies again and then move the other side of town um, more up and just wait until Thursday morning and we'll be off and it's been lovely as you can see you know we've got lovely views around us um, we've got cows in the distance over there which have been fine the only thing is the towpath has got increasingly muddy over the last few days it's been really rainy um, and it's not been pleasant for going out walking and for walking the dogs but this morning now I'm going for my hopefully my last walk <laughs> up and down the locks and back which have done or we have done between us most days since we've been here um, and it's a lovely walk but really muddy I'm going up there again today and hopefully today or tomorrow we will be moving um, so I'll just take you along on the walk and just show you a few of the sights I'm sure you've seen it before in cruising videos but um, I've got a little treat to show you we've got a secret of how we get the dogs clean here when we get back on the boat and I'll show you is more just the other side of that bridge here are the two muddy dogs and with a little help from a stick go on Jess go on come on then come on then come on Archie Nice clean bellies, nice clean feet. Mm. 